pumped for your first Q clash lap on? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's exciting. Uh, I guess it's exciting for the state, isn't it? That you know, we have got two. I mean, it's the first one I've been involved in, so I haven't, you know, it's, it's new for me. But I think more importantly, we'd like a win. I think that's probably the, the number one feeling more than that worrying about the, I guess, the enormity of the, the contest. Is it something that was sort of lacking from your time at the Lions? That sort of having another Queensland team to sort of have a rivalry against? Oh, not really. I've, winning enough's a good thing. I think <laughs> I'd rather that than having another team to compete with. So. I mean, I don't think it's anything we really think of, to be perfectly honest. I mean, I think for the game it's great, but for us as, you know, one team in Brisbane, we're more worried about our performances more than, I guess, um, yeah, I guess the, the feel of the, the state at this point in time. What have you focused on after, since the Geelong game? Where do you have to improve to um, win that game? I mean, weak game and we fumbled a fair bit. We've, we've spoken a lot about, about that. Um, I mean, structurally we've got things that change every week. Um, um, depending on the opposition, um, but the, the large majority of what we do was in ball movement wise won't change. Uh, we played them a month ago in the pre-season, they're missing some inside players obviously, um, so we take a lot out of that as well, but certain things as I said, because they, they weren't there, their, their mids um, will do a bit differently. Have the boys recovered from a six day turnaround, have you had a light week on the track? Uh, well this is our first session um, from last week, so yeah, it's, it's not a heavy, heavy week on the track, any six day break. Do you feel any pressure, Leppy? You've won the last, I know mean, you haven't been involved, but you've won the last five and there's yeah. sort of an expectation that Brisbane's the big brother and sons are coming. Oh, you feel a bit I probably don't feel the pressure of that. I mean, one thing, I mean, records only last so long. Eventually the team does win and that does change. I mean, whether it's this week or next time we play, I mean, it's, it's going to happen at some point down the track. I mean, you, you don't really worry about the past when you're, you're sort of looking into that into the week. How, how do you rate that? You, you would have seen the development from afar, obviously, but how do you rate this side? Uh, as far as a development perspective, they're probably about where we are, and the, the ladder probably shows that too. I mean, they're, they're aiming to push higher than that, and they want to. Um, so, but like us, they have to do the work to do that. So it's it's, it's going to be two teams that, you know, the comp, even I would have thought all you guys would think we sit relatively even. It's just a matter of who's going to um, close that gap quicker. Is Daniel Rich going to stand up and Jack Redden, or is it going to be, you know, Swallow and Nablet? I mean, that, that's probably the questions that are going to come out of the game. I think. Who gets gas? Biggest scares. Yeah. I wouldn't leave you all those <laughs> questions on a Thursday, would you? Um, no, I'm not going to tell you that right now. But I mean, obviously he's a good player. The thing about Gary too is that he's not the only midfielder they got. I don't know if you've seen. They've actually got some pretty decent kids that run around in there, and, and, and he, he doesn't even leave their score involvement. So I mean, you talk about he's a great player, but there are some other players we have to watch out for. So you can fall into a bit of a trap just looking at looking at Gary. You've got Rockliffe back in your lineup. Does that change your game plan too? Yeah, well, it makes it probably makes us a better team with him playing. So uh, it doesn't. It probably changes our planning a little bit because we've got another mid to go through that part of the ground. So if anything, it's a, it's a good problem though because you're putting another quality player in. He was obviously very um, prior to the Hawthorne match. He was quite outspoken. The fact that he's wanted to be aggressive and then he was suspended. Have you yeah. had to have a word to him this week before? No, no, no not really. I mean, I mean, the one thing you, you like about Tom Rockcliffe is the fact that he, he's a committed clubman and he wants to win and he wants to get in the face of the opposition. And you know, the, the problem is he overset the mark slightly. And we saw from the weekend there's two other players that got suspended for a very similar thing. So um, it's as much the competition saying those sort of little niggles aren't on anymore more than Tom really belting someone or doing anything that was really callous. It was as much a misjudgment than anything. Do you like that aggression, obviously, that he sort of brought to the table in that first week? Well, there he is right there. I don't like the bloke, but I like his aggression. <laughs> He's an ordinary bloke. He's an ordinary bloke. <laughs> um, oh, you do. You want it. I mean, good, good teams are, are aggressive um, and they take the game to the opposition and they do it in many ways. And um, um, we're teaching them that, you know, you don't want to overstep the mark. So it's just finding that balance. Tom coming in is, is an obvious change. Are you looking at many of no, not really. I mean, our reserves weren't weren't great on the weekend. I mean, one thing I said to the boys: you got to meet us halfway. You got to get in the team by, you know, beating the door down, not by just, you know, because we'll try it just because. So, um, you know, I wouldn't expect there to be too many. How important to get a result, I guess, to um, help the guys' confidence? It's your new game plan. They've sort of had two yeah. credible performances just to get over the line. Yeah, right. Credible performances versus winning. I mean, the, what the winning does is it gives you confidence in the game planning even more so. But one thing our, our job to do is to show the players that it is still working, but these are our lapses. And hopefully that's enough to convince them that what we're doing is on the right path. But you're right, the, the actual W next to the result actually just, you know, saves you speaking for too long. They kind of get it and they kind of say, yeah, this works. But um, And the belief sort of builds. So that would be nice. As I said, we're, the fixture's given us two pretty tough teams to start. Um, 
and um, and we've sort of haven't been up to the challenge of that group of, of, of team yet. Um, now we're sort of in that middle tier, and, and, and this week will prove how we go against that. Mays was good on the weekend. Justin, has yeah. he set a bit of a benchmark for himself now? Will you be pushing him along to try and keep yeah. that? He's terrific. He's actually pretty good forward, isn't he, Maisie? Uh, he's pretty tall too. I think he's grown another couple of centimetres in the off-season. He's, um, he's a big boy, so uh, he's been really valuable with his stuff inside 50. So the um, challenge for us is, you know, how much do we use him through the midfield and, and in the forward 50. He's, um, he's a pretty valuable kid. Where does he like playing, but where does he feel like he plays best? Uh, I think he's happy with the role he's got. Um, you ask a player if he prefers to kick goals or run around and, and do 15 k through the midfield, I think you know the answer they'll, they'll give you. <laughs> Um, so he's pretty happy with playing a bit of both. What's your take on the plump? All this talk about whether you coach or you have to change your coaching style because of it. Oh, you don't change your coaching style. I think it's more a player thing. You know, I think it's more the onus on the player now to be very careful. And obviously, the couple of instances on the weekend, there's a bump that resulted in some accidental head clashes, and, and the players got suspended. Well, that's what it seemed to be anyway. So um, you have got to be very conscious if you're a player and elect a bump. I think that's that's pretty much what the competition's telling you.